Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to continue our learning of classification in Earth Engine. Previously, we tried to look the examples, and in this content, we follow this book, Remote Sensing Dot Dev uh, Lab Four Classification. This is a very packaged learning chapter, and this is sure to help any learner to learn as well as think along the way. Uh, the link, uh, the link uh, is in the description. One thing uh, we are clear is that the main objective of the classification is to find that discrete category. The category can be vegetation, uh, it can be water, it can be urban, and so on. Uh, in this case, uh, to learn more about this, uh, more about the classification, we need to understand two different approaches in the classification. So the first one is unsupervised classification. Uh, in this type of classification, the grouping of the data set is done. And in the case of remote sensing, the grouping of the similar pixels uh, are done. So everything here is done by the computer, and we only specify uh, the number of clusters and the result which we get needs to be further interpreted, further leveled uh, by the user. And in the Earth Engine, we have this ee.cluster um, cluster for the unsupervised classification. And the second one is the supervised classification. In supervised classification, we have different way to uh, do this. Uh, we provide the training to the model. So for the training, uh, we need to have the training data and that training data is used to train that classifier um, and after after training that classifier uh, we classify the image uh, based on the trained classifier and in the way we do some tunings uh, where we try to understand uh, what uh, values might be appropriate or what sorts of uh, numbers might be appropriate and then repeat the process until we get the desired result. And we also have the third one, this is the regression. In this case, we are not uh, working for the uh, discrete category, we rather work for the numerical variables. So in simple terms, uh, we are using maybe uh, two or three different uh, predictor variables and then predict the final uh, variable or final something from those variables, from those predictors. So these are the three uh, different things. So I have copied uh, all the codes and try to uh, try to do the things uh, what the chapter has done. So here is the first uh, set of codes. This is for the unsupervised classification. So we have this geometry here. This is a polygon and this belongs somewhere here in Nepal, a beautiful place called Pokhara. So here is our geometry. The geometry can be drawn from this drawing toolbar, and here it is, the polygon. And then here we have this function, uh, mask L in ESL. This is just the cloud masking function. Uh, we select some bands here. And then we multiply with some constant, adding some constants. So this is the scaling. And here we are uh, selecting this QA pixel band, quality pixel band, and trying to hide those cloud pixels. So this is the cloud masking function. We see this often. And then here we are assigning this geometry to the variable and region just because we are trying to copy the code. So uh, just, um, just to of our time, let's say, just not to edit every time, just assigning that variable to that new variable. And then we have this Landsat image, and this has been filtered by the dates. We are applying this cloud masking function. Uh, images will be from our area of interest. Then we do this dot median. So this gives us the cloud free image. So we'll take all those images uh, within that year and 
will provide us with the single image. And then, uh, and then we have these visualizing parameters. We have these bands, band 4, band 3, and band 2, minimum and maximum values. We have gamma, and we are centering the object, the, this, um, this geometry, uh, with the zoom level 11, and we are adding this as the layer. So till this, this is, uh, this is normal. Uh, we do this most of the time, so there are no new things. And after this, we have something new. So here, we are taking that image. From that image, uh, we have this dot sample. So this dot sample contains that region, that geometry. So we are considering this, uh, this, this polygon as our, our region. And then we have scale. And this sample will have 5,000 uh, pixels. So we're specifying the pixels as well. And the next thing is the number of clusters. So we are assigning here seven. And the most important one, uh, the core thing of this, this uh, set of code is this ee.clusterer.wekk. So this is the, uh, this is the function uh, that will do the clustering. So then after we are followed by this uh, number of clusters, so we have specified number seven, and then we follow the this by dot train and we provide the sample. So this does all the thing. And then we can finally use that cluster to the whole image. So this is done by dot cluster and provide this uh, this this cluster, this variable. We can print the information, uh, what we have there. And finally, we can add that result as the layer so here we have dot random visualizer. So this gives some uh, random colors to those uh, seven different clusters. So we can run this and see what we get. So here in the console, we have the result and our result is a maze. Uh, it is the single uh, band image. So it is the final image of the, our, our result. And we can see some beautiful colors in the map section. So uh, from my current understanding, uh, what I can see is this classification has done the, um, this thing correctly. This is the lake. So this, this lake has been distinctly um, visible in the classification so that I can see. So this is the lake, and this has been made distinct. So the book also asks the question what the appropriate number of clusters should be. For instance, in this example, we are using seven, and this can be changed each time and see what each cluster brings us in this map section. So um, the particular number depends. Um, and it also depends on what we are doing, uh, our current level of understanding of the, of the clusters, uh, maybe our, our purpose and uh, maybe what type of research are we doing and well, we also might need to know um, what similar types of research has been done and so there are other clusters in the art engine so maybe we can explore that as well uh, in general this is the way of doing the um, clustering are the unsupervised classification in our engine. We just had the image, uh, we had this cluster, we provide that number of clusters to that, and then we apply that cluster to the whole image. And finally, we add this as the layer. So this is the whole step uh, we can see in the unsupervised classification. So this is the example. Then we have the unsupervised classification. So in the case of unsupervised classification, uh, we had just um, specified the number of cluster, and that's all. But in the case of uh, the supervised classification, we need to have some uh, something given to the model. So here in this this example is the supervised classification, and here you can see in the imports. Uh, I have done 
different feature collections. So feature collections can be drawn from the map uh, section here in the toolbars, drawing toolbars. So here, here I have drawn the water, for example. So this water, if we check this, so this has been named as water and this has been imported as feature collection. And then we have provided this property class and the value is zero. So this feature collection will have numbers of polygons and maybe points. And we can also import this as geometry feature and feature collection. So the default will be the geometry. So we need to select this feature collection and do uh, multiple polygons or multiple points. And, and each of these feature collection will have this different uh, class property. So for this vegetation, this will be one. So that's the way to uh, make the different types of feature collection here. And then all those feature collections are merged to make the big feature collection. So our training feature will be the big feature collection. And this feature collection will certainly um, uh, affect or have some effects in the, in the classification. And again, we have this cloud masking function. And then this is the repetition of the previous process. And the new thing here is the prediction bands. This will be used in the classification. So here we have band 2 to band 7, and then this band 10. And then we have this uh, image, median image. From that, we're selecting the prediction bands. Uh, we are doing this dot sample regions. And in that region, our collections will be the training features, and this properties will be the class. So this class is distinct to each feature collection, and the scale is 30. So this is the uh, this is the uh, variable that will be fit to the to the model, and finally we have this ee dot classifier dot small card. So this is the uh, main main function here, and then we train this model by dot train, and our features will be that classifier training we just created earlier, and then class property will be the class, and then our input properties will be those. Uh, prediction bands and then we are applying that uh, that trained classifier to the to the whole image by dot selecting dot select these bands and then by dot classify and then providing that classifier so this results in the uh, in the classified image and then uh, we have this minimum to maximum so zero will be minimum and maximum will be four because we have uh, five different classes that we want to classify. So that will give us the classified image from this uh, from this smile card. And then we can see uh, different types of uh, um, different types of accuracies. So for that, we have this training and testing of the data, uh, testing data. So for this, we provide this random column. So this random column gives some column to the, um, to the, to the data. And then we split the training and testing data based on some uh, value. If something is less than this, this will go to training. If something greater than this, we'll go to the training. So this is the way to do in the uh, in this type of supervised classification. And then this trend, uh, the training is has been done here using the using the training data. So this is the trained one, and then this training uh, trained um, model drawn by this training data will be applied to the testing data. So we are. Now classifying this testing data by that uh, model trained with the uh, training data set. So two different data sets will be uh, is being used here. And then we can print the confusion matrix. And 
here we can see e dot confusion matrix and then we after we are classifying that uh, testing data by the trend um, by the trend uh, classifier and then uh, and then we are printing all those uh, confusion uh, all those metrics here for example the confusion matrix we are printing the overall accuracy producers accuracy and consumers accuracy so uh, these are the uh, way to know how the model has done and uh, this kinds of uh, this this kind of gives us the idea how the how the correct labeling has been done or uh, you know how the pixels has been uh, in how the pixels has been categorized or classified uh, overall and so this is all the sum uh, after doing the the classification so we will see this later what it reveals so another um, uh, another function or the another popular classifier is the random forest and here we can see that being done so in this case we have this landsat image from which we are selecting the prediction band so we are repeating this process for the random forest so we have taught sample regions and in this case some buffer has been uh, has been done so this is the way to do here uh, might not have been important but this is what the book is doing and this is the, this will be the sample and this sample will be fed to the uh, random forest so this is the main function here ee dot classifier dot smile random forest we are providing the number of trees as 10 so the main parameter in the random forest is the number of trees there are other uh, parameters but the most important one is the number of trees and then we are training this by that sample features we created earlier and then we have this class propagates class our input properties will be the bands and finally we uh, apply that uh, classifier to the image and this can be added as the layer and as the main important parameter in the uh, in the random forest is the number of trees so um, we can see which number of trees will be appropriate uh, for that uh, for that or for our purpose so this is called the hyperparameter tuning the process uh, and in this hyperparameter tuning uh, what we do is we try to find that optimal uh, number of trees which will give us the high higher number of accuracies and this is here you can see the example so we are again splitting the data into two we'll provide the random column and we are splitting the splitting the data into two different groups and here we have the sequence e dot list dot sequence creating the sequence from 5 to 50 with the increment of 5 and in that uh, sequence we map the function and this will be the uh, this will here is the t this will be the number of trees each time and then we have this e dot classifier dot smile and forest so each time uh, each time this uh, number will be used um, this will be trained and this trend will trend uh, classifier will classify the test data and will return the uh, error matrix or accuracies each time so this will go each time and this will be resulted as an array and this can be printed as the chart so we will uh, see what this all this uh, course will bring in the console in the map section so the the first one here was the different types of accuracies and to talk about the accuracies we have this uh, confusion matrix so this is the confusion matrix so in the confusion matrix um, so we had uh, five different uh, classes we wanted to classify and uh, in this uh, in this uh, confusion matrix the diagonal ones are the one that are correctly leveled and leveled or correctly classified so these are the pixels that were correctly done uh, by the model but the the other one outside the diagonal one here uh, they were false uh, or they were falsely classified uh, in that class 
So this is the general idea of the confusion matrix. So we can see the overall accuracy is 0 0.997. So this might be the case uh, where we have the overfitting or something uh, like that that Tom is used, where it is forcefully doing these things. But if we had uh, increased the number of uh, classes, then this would not have been the case. So it depends. Uh, this overall accuracy is changed every time with the number of classes, with the number of uh, trainings, uh, polygons, for example. So this happens. Then we have this producer's accuracy and the consumer's accuracy. So these are based on that uh, confusion matrix. We're selecting the uh, columns or selecting the um, selecting the rows there. And then we had this uh, hyperparameter tuning. So we can see here the number of trees from 0 to 50. And then the accuracies in this uh, vertical site. And each time the a number of tree increases, there has been some increase in the accuracies and decrease in the accuracies. Uh, but from this uh, graph, uh, we are not sure which might be the correct uh, number of trees because we can see some ups and downs. So we might need to change the uh, polygons or change the um, change these polygons. I think we can add that. But this is to just to show the number of trees and the accuracies. We can compare the two different uh, classifications being done from the model. The first one was the cart classifier. So this is doing some classification here. So, and the second one was the random forest. So again, the way how these classifiers are doing are very different. And again, I can see that the random forest classification is doing the uh, classification of this water body very distinctly. So this is the lake and this is very visible. And for the cart classifier, this is not that visible. So this is the this is the example of the um, supervised classification. So there are other uh, classifiers as well in the Earth engine. Uh, we can sure explore them more. And uh, the basic approach is the same. We will have some training data, and we'll. From that training data, we will maybe split into two groups and maybe train the model with the half of that data and try to check the other accuracies from the test data. In general, this is the way to do the supervised classification. And finally, we have this, the final one, the, the regression. So the regression is also the other way to predict the numeric variable. We do not work with the class level here. We do not work with the distinct uh, result. So we estimate the values, uh, which are unknown, uh, by multiplying with some coefficients. In simple terms, uh, we are doing the linear regression. So we have dependent and independent variables, and we try to find some variables uh, based on those. So in this example, we try to estimate the percent tree cover in Landsat pixel using the modis pixels. So we have this modis data set and this uh, modis data set contains the tree percent. So these are the way to visualize. So we are here visualizing this this uh, percent tree data. Finally adding this as the layer. So these are not new here. And then after we have this Landsat uh, 5 uh, in this case. And so these are the Rossins. Um, 
So this will be our predictors. And then we can see um, this e dot algorithms dot land center simple composite creating the cloud for image. Uh, we're centering this point S in the in the map section. We're adding this uh, Landsat image as the lure. We have the prediction bands here. And then after we are stacking those uh, those bands or those predictors. So these will be our uh, predictors variables and uh, and we also have this portion tree cover here. And then after we are sampling 1000 pixels out of this, this training image. Um, so this gives a table of feature collection. Uh, each will contain the value of each band, uh, a value for the portion tree cover and a constant uh, value of one. So this will be for the training. So just the way how it goes. Then after, uh, then after we are uh, doing this creation. So this is done by dot reduce columns here. So we are applying this reducer. So in in our engine we do the linear regression by reducer. Um, so we already have the value of reducers as input. Um, and here are the inputs uh, variables as the predictors, and then we have the selectors. So these are the list that we created earlier. So here in general we are preparing the uh, preparing the data for the for the linear creation. So we had our training image, uh, we had our training, and then here we had the list. Uh, the constant and the uh, portion tree cover and then we print the equation just to see what it results and then we have the coefficients we're getting the coefficients and with the coefficients are being changed into the list and the main thing here is finally this one so from uh, from that in uh, from that landset we're selecting the prediction bands we're multiplying those bands with some coefficients and we are adding out those and renaming as the predicted tree cover. So what we see just now is the is the linear regression in off engine. And finally this can be added as the year. So there are there are also other ways to do the non-linear regression. Um, so other regression functions uh, are implemented uh, implemented by the uh, classifier library. So here is the way to do the nonlinear regression in off engine. So the set output mode here is the regression. So we have this function again being used. This is the ee dot classifier dot small cut that we saw earlier. Uh, so and and this is followed by this dot train. We have our features as training, and then class property, and then input properties as the prediction bands. And so from that we are uh, we are doing this in the Landsat image. So we have this Landsat image uh, where we are selecting the bands, and then we are classifying by that uh, by that variable made earlier. And this can be added as layer. So in general, we can run this. So in general, uh, in general, this is the way to do the uh, linear regression in our engine. So as to recap again, uh, we had this Landsat 5 image, and then we had this training image, and then we had this, from that training image, um, was prepared for the training, and our training list content, these are the number of bands, content the constant and the portion tree cover, and then we applied this e to reduce the total linear creation, and then we provided that uh, two different training lists which contain the constant and the portion tree cover and then after we had this coefficient printed here so we can see the, uh, the regression here so there are different coefficients we should also these are the terms related to the linear regression and this is selecting the coefficients from above and 
and in the maps layer we have the first one this is the modish one then we had this cloud tree image then we had the prediction uh, from that land set and then after we have this card recreation so this much in this uh, video so these were the things I tried to cover uh, I suppose this was helpful maybe not maybe maybe or maybe not so please go through the chapter once um, and if you have any comments uh, please feel free to write there are sure uh, a lot of things to learn and I personally hope to learn more so uh, I just want to say thank you for watching so thank you